I am absolutely delighted to welcome all of you to this uh, Digital Scotland conference. Uh, to those of you here from outside Scotland, can I extend a particularly warm welcome to Edinburgh on what I can assure you is a typically warm and sunny uh, summer's day. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, dinner uh, last night in Edinburgh Castle. I'm very sorry I wasn't able to join you, um, but I know John Swinney uh, looked after you well and uh, told me it was a, a very pleasant evening. Uh, so I hope uh, and I expect that you will have a, a very interesting time here at this conference, uh, not least because you join us here at what is a really exciting moment on Scotland's journey to becoming a world-class digital nation, because that is our ambition, to be a world-class digital nation. Twelve months ago, I know that my colleague Alec Neil addressed this very conference, and he did that at a time of great optimism about what we might achieve here in Scotland. Uh, at the time Alec Neil addressed this conference, we just announced our intention to procure a next generation infrastructure across the country. We had uh, set out our digital strategy and we were beginning to fill some key posts in our newly created digital directorate. So there was a great deal of enthusiasm at that time for what we might achieve in Scotland. Uh, but Alec was clear back then, as I am equally clear today, that we should be judged not just on our intentions, uh, but more importantly, on our achievements. It's our ability to deliver as much as, if not more than, the extent of our ambition uh, that you should judge us on. So 12 months on, uh, and uh, in light of that, I'm very pleased to report that while the enthusiasm and the ambition that we have remains as high and as bright as ever, uh, we can also point to really significant progress in the development of digital infrastructure across Scotland. Uh, in March, we signed a contract to deliver next generation broadband across the highlands and islands of the country. Uh, that's an investment of £146 million in one of uh, the most complex civil engineering programmes ever seen in the telecommunications sector. And I just want to uh, give you a couple of stats that underline the complexity and the scale of this project. 400 kilometres of subsea cables to provide 19 island crossings, uh, 800 kilometres of fibre to be laid across some of the most challenging landscapes, uh, not just anywhere in Scotland or the UK, but in fact anywhere in Europe. A new resilient backhaul network that will provide a platform for future economic development and regeneration. It's a massive project, it's a complex project, but it's a vitally important one in terms of the infrastructure of the country. So we're very pleased to have got to this important point in that. Uh, but we're also pleased to say that the second piece of the jigsaw, a contract that will provide next generation access to the rest of Scotland, uh, is also on track. It's been negotiated against a very demanding timetable, but remains on track to be signed next month. And that has only been possible because of a very special partnership that has developed between the government and Scottish local authorities. Uh, and that's due largely, and I want to acknowledge this publicly today, to the very active support that the project team has enjoyed from both COSLA and SOLAS. It's a partnership at both political and officer level that's seen 14 local authorities across Scotland identify an additional £50 million to meet their own local needs and priorities on top of the coverage that's going to be provided from the national funding pot. So that's a, a shared recognition that our future is a digital future. It represents a shared ambition to empower our communities in that digital future and a shared determination to work together to deliver the best deal for the people that we collectively serve. So we're proud of the progress we've made in the Next Generation initiative. But impressive though that is, and it is impressive, I want to be very clear today that we recognise that these two programmes are not the only answer. Uh, they will provide access to next generation broadband to at least 85% of premises across Scotland, but we are equally determined to enhance connectivity in the areas that remain outside of that. And that's why step change will also deliver noticeable improvements in speeds for those areas where next generation services are not practicable at the current time. And it's why we're working with many of you here in this room right now 
to also develop alternative technologies that are uniquely suited to the very particular challenges of remote and rural areas, of which Scotland uh, has uh, very many, as you're aware. It's also why we've launched and committed £5 million to Community Broadband Scotland, a national programme that will deliver world-class broadband solutions at community level. Um, and it's important to stress here that Community Broadband Scotland is not about imposing solutions in rural areas. Instead, it's about empowering and supporting those communities to develop their own solutions, solutions that are tailored to meet their local requirements and able to meet the specific needs of local people. And if you're able to visit the Digital Communities Hub in the Expo here today, you'll get a real sense, I hope, of the support and guidance that is being provided through a range of different channels. We've got online toolkits, a telephone helpline and hands-on face-to-face support through a team of professional community support officers. And more importantly, perhaps, uh, I hope you will get a sense uh, of progress that is already being made within our six pioneer communities. Uh, an understanding of how they are meeting the challenges of business planning and insight into how they're pioneering different forms of technology and a sense of their commitment to learning from experience and then working through community champions to tell their stories and inspire others to deliver world-class connectivity in their own areas. I also want to say a word about uh, cities because uh, we're also uh, making significant progress in our cities, particularly through the work of the Scottish Cities Alliance. Edinburgh, Aberdeen and Perth have been successful in the UK Super Connected Cities programme. Uh, and while, of course, we're disappointed at the UK government's inability to secure state aid approval for an investment in infrastructure in these areas, we're nevertheless working with the cities to identify solutions that will support the rollout of wireless technology and promote uptake of ultra-fast broadband amongst the SMEs. Uh, and I was also uh, delighted as a, a resident and a representative of the city of Glasgow. Uh, I was absolutely delighted by Glasgow's success in being awarded uh, £24 million from the UK Technology Strategy Board to lead the way as a future cities demonstrator. That offers Glasgow, but I also think it offers the rest of Scotland a real opportunity to be at the forefront of a smart city revolution. It will enable Glasgow to develop a dashboard that will monitor a range of systems and services across the city. So, for example, the ability to monitor energy levels so that the city can store energy when demand is low and use it when demand is high. Significant opportunity to cut fuel bills and help fight fuel poverty, a significant issue in the city of Glasgow. It will give the ability to use real-time information on traffic congestion and public transport services, allowing people to plan their journeys more easily. These are all real tangible benefits that the public will get through the digital work that Glasgow is able to progress. And as I uh, said, uh, I have no doubt that the rest of Scotland can learn a great deal from that as uh, well. I've spoken a lot so far about infrastructure and it's vitally important, uh, crucially important for obvious uh, reasons. But important uh, though uh, the infrastructure is essential, though it is, uh, what is actually more important is what the infrastructure enables us uh, to do. Uh, and that ultimately uh, and fundamentally is what matters most. Uh, and through our demonstrating digital programme, we're positioning Scotland, uh, or we are seeking to position Scotland as a country that welcomes and encourages uh, world-class innovation in mobile and wireless uh, technology. It's about showcasing the art of the possible and giving uh, the people uh, of Scotland a glimpse today of what is possible in a digital future. Uh, so, as I indicated earlier on, we're working with island communities to develop solutions that can overcome the often quite unique challenges of geography, working with social housing providers like Glasgow Housing Association, to bring affordable connections and services to the digitally excluded, partnering with industry to deliver a series of exhibitions, demonstrations and pilots, which will showcase point-to-point -point microwave links, free space optics, small scale technologies, uh, small cell technologies that could enable a uh, lower cost extension of existing mobile networks. So we're building 
a centre of expertise within Scottish Government that can design and deliver demonstration projects and provide uh, the technical support and guidance that is necessary in support of major events like the Homecoming, the Ryder Cup, the Commonwealth uh, Games, uh, because these events will do a great deal to showcase Scotland to the world and we want the confidence and ambition uh, that we have as a nation to be reflected in the digital experience that we're able to provide to visitors from around the world. Uh, I want to also uh, say a word about uh, transport because we recognise that uh, transport is a big challenge for us. But again, we're starting to see good progress made here. Uh, indeed, only last week, my colleague, the Transport Minister, Keith Brown, uh, was able to announce that as part of our commitment to ensure that uh, travellers have free wireless uh, internet across the rail network by 2019. We will be introducing free Wi-Fi in 25 of our busiest stations by the middle of next year, an important down payment on that 2019 commitment. Uh, and also the internet access will be introduced uh, on board the new Class 380 trains that run through Ayrshire, Inverclyde, Lanarkshire uh, and Lothian. So we recognise the challenges around transport, but again, we're determined uh, to drive forward and make considerable uh, progress. Uh, so we are, uh, I think it's fair to say, proud of the achievements we've made over uh, the last uh, number of months, but we uh, recognise that we have only laid the foundations of the world-class digital nation that we want to become. Uh, with the ambition we've got, with the skills of the people uh, who live here, we've got the opportunity to go so much further uh, and indeed to go even faster than we're going just now. Um, and that's why at the beginning of the year we set out a vision of the kind of Scotland that we're determined to build uh, by 2020, a Scotland in which people choose to engage digitally, not because government forces them to do so or tells them they need to do so, but because they have decent access to decent technology and that they're capable and confident of using it, whether that's at home, at work or when they're on the move. We want to see a Scotland where our businesses have the skills and the confidence to exploit digital technologies. Uh, we want to be seen throughout the world as a, an attractive place for inward investment in our digital industries and where the support is in place to encourage digital innovation and support the creation, the growth and the uh, transformation uh, of businesses in a digital sense. Uh, we want to see uh, a Scotland where all public services that can be are delivered and accessible online, uh, where the Internet of Things stimulates innovation and drives efficiencies, whether that's in healthcare, in education, transport, environmental management, you know, where machine-to-machine -machine technologies can help our cities manage congestion, maximise energy efficiency, enhance public security, allocate resources based on real-time evidence, and where we have a, a shared commitment to open data and a shared determination across all sectors of the economy to work in partnership to stimulate innovation and deliver service improvements. The starting point for delivering that, of course, is the world-class digital connectivity, a hybrid of fixed and mobile networks that will support any device, anywhere, any time connectivity across the country. Uh, so by 2020, our vision is to ensure the maximum penetration of fibre across the country. We must, as a minimum, see fibre serving the core, backhaul and access networks. Fibre links set to all communities with a thousand premises or more and the widespread deployment of fibre to the home and urban and semi-urban areas that has to be supported by a ubiquitous mobile wireless coverage be that 4G or its successor technologies uh, greater than 98% of the geography and 100% of the population. Uh, I am very aware uh, and I know many of you here today will be equally aware that Scotland has been uh, relatively poorly served from previous rounds of mo mobile infrastructure investment. And that is more than borne out by our surveys of 2G and 3G user experience across the country, which we'll, we'll publish next month, and Ofcom's uh, report and communications services that was published last week. Our path, and you know, make no mistake about this, our path to world-class connectivity will reach a dead end very quickly if we can address that legacy issue. Uh, so I make uh, no bones about calling on the mobile network operators to work in partnership with us to ensure optimal and widespread rollout of, three, of 4G and to make sure, uh, and this is critically important, to make sure that we don't end up 
widening the gap between those who are receiving 4G and those who currently have no 3G or even 2G service. Uh, that's why we want to explore the potential of roaming as a cost-effective way of extending coverage into rural and remote areas. And it's why, as part of that partnership, we're prepared to look at planning legislation and the uh, often vexed issue of business rates relief and mobile phone mass in order that we can accelerate deployment. If we can do this, uh, and I think the will to do it is there on both sides, then we will ensure that Scotland is well positioned to take early advantage of future technologies such as LTE Advanced. It might take a, a number of years to achieve world-class connectivity, but the work to uh, achieve the goal has started, and I want to emphasise that. We've facilitated discussions on the creation of an internet exchange in Scotland. Uh, an internet exchange will help provide a better experience for consumers, allow businesses to connect directly to the internet more cheaply and more easily, and it will increase the resilience of the internet infrastructure here. Uh, and I'm very pleased to say that the internet community are behind this initiative and are aiming to have an exchange installed in Edinburgh by September of this year. Uh, this is uh, vital uh, if we're to uh, coordinate investment by government, industry and communities across uh, the country uh, should help to enable uh, infrastructure sharing and allow the public sector to focus uh, on areas that are truly affected uh, by market uh, failure. I want to uh, move on to say a word about our digital uh, dialogue. Uh, when we published our World Class 2020 vision, uh, we didn't claim to have identified the perfect solution, nor did we claim to have all of the answers. Uh, rather, we uh, recognised and, and we said quite explicitly that in the digital age, where technology is evolving at an ever-increasing rate, where ideas emerge uh, from the user experience, where uh, concepts are tested and refined in the market rather than behind uh, closed doors, we need to be able to practise what we preach and we need to develop a different approach to policy making. Uh, so that's why we've been, over the past few months, running an exercise which we've called Scotland's Digital Dialogue. Uh, discussion threads on social media, seminars with leading experts that have been filmed and used to stimulate further comment, the formation of groups to generate fresh thinking and identify new opportunities for change. And today's conference, uh, of course, it is part of that process and I'm, I'm grateful to all of you for taking part and I, I'm sure there will be lots of good ideas come forward uh, from these sessions. I said earlier on that it is about more than infrastructure and it is about so much more than infrastructure. So the digital dialogue uh, will continue over the coming months uh, but I want to, just before I, I conclude today, uh, highlight the most important message that has emerged uh, loudly and clearly from our discussions to date. And that message is the one uh, I've already uh, given you. And I say this in full knowledge uh, that I'm addressing an audience that includes many of the country's leading experts in digital infrastructure. But the key message that has emerged from our work to date is that infrastructure alone, no matter how fast it is, no matter how ubiquitous it is, will be necessary, but it will not be sufficient to turn us into the digital nation uh, we want to be. It provides the opportunity, but it doesn't uh, provide all of the answers. Uh, so the 2020 uh, vision of everyone participating in anything, anytime, anywhere implies not just that we've got the infrastructure, but it also implies and demands that everyone is digitally literate, that they're energised and confident and motivated to interact in a digital society. And that's why we've been working with some of the uh, leading companies in Scotland to reinvigorate the digital participation charter and ensure that it's resourced and operated in a way that allows it to fulfil its potential as a vehicle for lasting cultural change across the country. Uh, the charter team have a stand in the expo today and I would really urge you to talk to them and consider whether your organisation might be prepared to sign up and join us on this uh, journey. It's also why we've set out a new strategy for digital public services and begun the process of building a new online services team uh, with the Scottish Government to add fresh impetus to this agenda. 
Uh, and finally, it's why, as part of our world-class digital dialogue, Scotland's enterprise and skills agencies came together uh, with the government to produce a series of proposals about what more we can all do collectively to stimulate a vibrant digital economy uh, across the country. Their report contains a range of recommendations to strengthen the breadth and depth of support offered to companies of all sizes uh, and get the public sector to procure digital services through a an agile procurement framework that will support small and innovative businesses in developing the skills that can provide them with a platform for future competitive success. And I'm delighted to uh, say today that we're investing an additional £7 million to take forward these recommendations. Uh, this will complement the resources that are already in place within our enterprise and skills agencies and I hope provide a spur for future European investment in ensuring that all of our 340,000 businesses have the opportunity to keep pace with and secure a really competitive advantage from digital technologies. So everything I've spoken about today will contribute to our 2020 uh, vision. We are undoubtedly moving into a world uh, where uh, cities that were once uh, defined by uh, their cathedrals will be defined instead by their connectivity, where rural businesses uh, that will traditionally have relied on local markets will be able to compete on a global stage where we'll be able to sustain home working on an unprecedented scale, uh, offering a platform for digital entrepreneurs. Uh, the transformation of our society and our economy uh, will not result solely from the deployment of infrastructure. It fundamentally depends on the skills of our people, the ingenuity of our businesses and the delivery of high quality digital public services. Uh, the government is setting the bar high. I hope I've underlined the extent and the scale of our ambition, but delivery will only be possible if the vision uh, are shared and owned by all sectors of the economy and society. And that's why our approach has to be collaborative and our digital dialogue reflects that. So uh, I wish you well with this conference. I'm sorry I can't uh, stay for more of it, but I look forward to hearing the feedback from it. And I have no doubt at all uh, that the discussions you have here will contribute to that ambition we have uh, for Scotland to be that world-class digital nation. Thank you very much indeed.